Hi there, welcome back to the channel. So, bass guitar. Meanwhile, I'm really stoked because the guitars went way better than I, I envisioned, mainly because I got an excellent tone out of the amp and the, after tweaking the guitar for, for days. And uh, so I got a good combination there and just got lucky with uh, my mic placement. It just, mm. So everything was good, both guitar, uh, the little riff solo lead, and the um, main track are thumbs up and the drums are sounding good. So now I've been working on the bass part, which is really simple for this tune. I kept trying to come up with things to do that would add to it, but the guitar, it's very simple, but it's a little busy sonically. Uh, there's different moments, like the guitar does all this different little stuff and little rhythm uh, changes that kind of fill up the tone and I don't want to distract or have something major underneath, you know, a whole other melodic structure underneath, so I'm kind of just following along uh, and I'm going to go show you in the zoom what I'm doing here I'll get you a close-up uh, but mainly what I'm doing is uh, I decided to run the two pre it's number five so if you go to effect so let's see here I'll start it from the beginning go to effect and if you have it in off you want to turn it on by moving your wheel one click to the right and then I'm going to go down to algorithm I've got it on bass go down one more and it's number five tube pre. Now what I've done differently this time, and you plug directly in, but what I've done differently this time is I usually just come out of the, the Gibson Victory bass and plug directly in. This time I'm going into my Carl Martin headroom pedal. Uh, I've got tone uh, at 12 and I've got the level, the reverb level from the springs at 12 as well. And it it's really awesome. It's adding a little bit of ambiance. It kind of mass matches with the sort of Fender airy reverby tone I've already got going. Uh, so I'm excited about that. And it acts as a buffer. I can tell it's like helping it get quieter and just giving it more, giving it more of like an amp tone. You know, it sounds more like I'm, I'm recording. I'm hearing it coming through an amp as if I recorded it on an amp and, you know, as opposed to plugging it directly in doing direct. Now, uh, a friend of the channel, subscriber, uh, regular commenter came in and, and mentioned that, or asked the question, hey, do you ever have trouble keeping instrument cables plugged into this input? And the answer is yes. Uh, you have to put them into input one because that's your high Z, and I've got that on. Uh, and they just slip. You know, I've, and I'm glad to know that it's not just my cable. This has a Nutrix uh, connector, which is an excellent uh, uh, interconnect ca uh, cable and a line level cable uh, so it shouldn't be that but uh, uh, it slips so there's different ways to deal with it I, having this pedal makes it easy because there's never any uh, impact on the cable so maybe if you have some kind of buffer or something you could plug your guitar into and then have that go into and then come out of that into the zoom so that there's no movement or anything you would do to disturb it because I tell you if you just barely tap it, it yeah, right there I just barely touched it and it slid out and it doesn't look like it's disconnected it's kind of still looks connected and you'll be like freaking out like well where's the level and it's just because the, the cables unplugged in. it looks plugged in you know when you a cursory glance plugged in so you go on to the next troubleshoot but it's actually unplugged all right so thanks for mentioning that I uh, forgot the, the the friend that mentioned it but that is a very good question and is something that comes up. Uh, I don't know what they could do about that except maybe make that connection a little tighter. I don't know. I'm figuring it's a multi-purpose connection. We should be, I guess, happy that it works at all, but that is a consideration. So I'm going to try to get a, a, a take. It, there's not much to this part and I'm not much of a bass player. Uh, I don't want to give it short shrift, but I really feel like this, what I'm, the minimalist thing is working for the tune. So if I thought I was short changing it, I would go and really work something up. And if I start listening to it and I feel like that's the case, I will. But so far, I feel okay with what I've got. So I'm gonna to try to get a take real quick on camera. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how to record bass. All right, so I'm in channel one. I've got a guitar instrument cable here, plugging directly in, and these slip out, so make sure you secure it whatever way you can, tape it down, whatever, I don't know. No, I don't put tape on there, I get tape goo all over your machine. Okay, now, I'm arming it. That, you saw the track jump to life. Uh, we'll set gain later once we start playing along to the track. High Z is in the 
on position because we're using an instrument, right? We've got to get that signal up to get it to Unity gain to what the machine likes to record in. Okay, now, insert effects. I'm going to do bass and I'm plugging in direct, right? I'm not using a microphone. I'm not using an amplifier. I'm using the Zoom's effects. So let's go see what we have. I'm going to go down to, see how it says algorithm distortion? I'm going to change that to, there's acoustic slash bass. I don't like those for what I do. Uh, I've used them before, but not for this material. Okay, here's a bass. I've got it on SVT. I don't know if I'll use that or not, but you can see here's uh, the bass man. That's like a Fender bass man. It doesn't sound anything like it. The SVT is kind of close. Uh, heart Geaton, sort of. Uh, let's see, this one. Super B, nope, not even close. Uh, the Sans Amp sounds pretty close. Uh, the 2 Pre is what I use a lot of the time. It's just kind of a neutral sounding warm tone. Sounds like vintage, like what I'm used to. Uh, old Ampeg amps for bass. Uh, this one's Attack, not interested. Uh, let's see, Wah, nope. So anyway, there's not many to use. I'll either use that SVT one, or I will use the um, 2 Pre. And I usually always end up on Tupri. Who knows why? Uh, I, Aaron used Slap to great effect. So maybe I'll use Slap. Uh, we used Slap on his records, uh, his recordings, a, a couple of EPs, and potentially a full length. Uh, he used the Slap one. I can't find it right now. I'll look for it. But um, there's a Slappy one that actually didn't sound that Slap. It just had a little more. There it is, number 10. Okay, so anyway. You pick the one you want, your arm, your track, you play with your gain. I got my levels at 100, and then you just start playing along to the track and hit record when you're ready. Rocking good news. All right, back out. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. So I'm gonna see if I can get a, a take really quickly. I just tuned the bass up. I've got it plugged into input one. Uh, it's a very simple part. I'll probably mess it up a bunch of times, but I can, you know, trim the footage down so you don't have to sit through all the takes. You'll just see me uh, mess up a lot. Okay, so on this one, I've got, I'm plugging directly in and making sure that cable's not going to slip out on me. Uh, I'm plugging the headphones in and then wrapping them behind my arms and I'll get in my way. Playing with a pick. I tried doing my finger stuff, but it was just a little too subtle. Uh, I'm just not a great bass player or anything like that. I just, but I don't want to, you know, act like bass is very important, extremely important. So I'm checking levels. Okay, I'm gonna push it just a little more. Don't wanna record it too softly. All right, so you'll see this is pretty simple. Let's see if I can rip one. Fingers crossed. Check one more time, new take. All my tracks are good. Okay, everything's groovy. You scratch my ankle and hit record play. Well, that was already a mistake.
I always turn it off after a good take because uh, it might have been fixed with that software 1.13 but the original 1.10 uh, which was an update of another software. It used to crash on me every once in a while. It hit stop and it would just spin and you'd lost the take. So out of habit, I always just turn it off, which project saves it. That was the take. We'll go back and see there was one little moment, but like I said, I like to leave the little glitches in so that it seems real. So it doesn't sound too multi-track, too, too faked, and I don't do any funny stuff you know, afterwards. So I'm gonna listen back and we'll see what happens. Hopefully I won't be here the rest of the night. Next time.